Look, a lot of Auburn fans, I, I hear you. You're freaking out about TJ Finley and where he's standing currently in this quarterback battle. It's going to be okay. I'll tell you why on today's Locked on Auburn. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked on Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day because it's your team every single day. Joining as he does every Monday, baseball zone, Lindsey Crosby. Of course, he is a writer at AuburnDaily.com. He is the host of Locked On MLB Prospects also, and Man, we're now a few days out from Auburn's first scrimmage of fall camp. And if you missed it, we recorded a show that was kind of immediate reaction based on everything that we have heard with Daryl Dapper. That went up Sunday morning. But Lindsey, um, thank you. Lindsey, I mean, the the big thing, right, is everybody responding to the quarterback position because obviously that is the biggest story of fall camp. And man, it really seems like TJ Finley is in the lead. Currently, we saw that earlier in the week last week in regards to, you know, who was getting most reps with the ones and we saw them rotate a little bit. And and I think a lot of guys played in a lot of different places last night or two nights ago in regards to, you know, where they were with the ones, twos and threes. But the biggest thing here is I think we have to get in the mindset of regardless of who wins the quarterback job, Lindsay. That doesn't determine if the season is a a success or not or a failure and and with what a lot of Auburn people are saying. It doesn't matter. Brian Harson and his staff is going to pick the quarterback that they believe will help them win the most games in 2022. You can either, you know, be upset about it or or, or whatever, and you can say Robbie Ashford's better or Zach Calzada's better or TJ Finley's better, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I just think that's a really, really important note. We all can have our opinions. I have my opinions. You have your opinions. If you're watching this, a daily show about Auburn football, you definitely have your opinions. But the truth in all of this, Lindsay, is it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's... Okay, so one of the things that we've talked about that we liked about Brian Harson is the is the reputation and the history he has of developing players. So if TJ Finley is the starting quarterback and you are unhappy because of how you evaluated him in a what five game sample last year when he had been taking snaps with the twos all year, then what you're saying is you have no faith in Brian Harson and his ability to develop a player. Sure. I mean, who you are at the end of your second season of college football where you haven't been a full-time starter in either one is not the finished product of who you are as a player. Agreed. And so having most of us, you excluded, but most of us have not been into fall camp. We have not seen these practices. We did not see what they did over the summer. It is a very real possibility that TJ Finley has taken significant strides since last year. And I think if this coaching staff, like you said, if this coaching staff makes the pick of TJ Finley's the guy, it's for a reason, and we need to give the benefit of the doubt to Ryan Harson and to TJ Finley. Yeah, and there's a couple of there's a couple of angles I want to take on this, Lindsay. Okay, the first is you know Brian Harson made it very clear it's not about just passing and throwing the football. He he made that clear in the post scrimmage press conference. We talked about that a little bit on the Sunday show, but in a general sense, he cares more about the leadership and relaying the calls and a lot of the logistical stuff that goes with playing the position. Obviously execution is extremely important, but I think execution looks different to different people. And so obviously you need to be able to deliver the ball where it needs to be, but there's more to the position than just that. And based on everything Brian Harson said and people that attended the full scrimmage that I talked to, it sounds like TJ Finley is the best at that as far as relaying the call, getting people in position, and running the play that is called and all 11 people on the field being on the same page. It sounds like TJ Finley is the best at that, which makes sense, right? He was here a year ago. The other two that he's competing with 
or not. So that totally, totally, totally makes sense. On the other hand, do you have any thoughts on that real quick? I was going to say um, that that is where you expect him to be. Like that is that is what you should be seeing given the fact that he was here all last year. Ashford was here in the spring. Calzada right. was here in the spring but didn't have a chance to take live reps. So that makes sense if one, two, three breaks down Finley, Ashford, Calzada based on that. Mm -hmm. And then I still stand by my comments that I made throughout the first week of fall camp when we were out there. I think Calzada has a better arm than TJ Finley. I, I I do. But if you don't know the playbook, which it sounds like that's an issue, or if you can't do the other things that are being, you know, the quarterback, then it doesn't matter. And also, like, just talking to play, players, players see TJ Finley as his quarterback. Um they really, really like TJ. They all rally around TJ. And that's not me saying that they dislike Calzada and they dislike Robbie. That is not what I'm saying. But I think a lot of folks in this locker room see TJ as a leader. And for Brian Harson, which we've all talked in time and time and time and time again, how much of a culture guy he is, for him to gush about how TJ Finley handles himself in the locker room immediately after the scrimmage, I think that's pretty telling. Yeah, TJ Finley is a guy, we know that the, the team loves him. We know that he's been around. Um, it's a situation where ultimately if he's the starter, that's because he's the incumbent. He has the most relation, like the most history with this locker room, with the playbook, with the coaching staff. He has the most experience with these players in the locker room, with the coaching staff, with the playbook. Um, and it's going to take you're going to have to be markedly better than him to yeah. pass him on the depth chart. I mean, that's that makes logical sense. And I think it's something where we all kind of got in the trap, and I'm probably guilty of this too, where you see a Calzada transfer in, and you're like, oh, he's the guy. He's coming in to start. He's the first transfer they took. You kind of think, okay, he's the guy. Whereas it may have been a situation where they genuinely said, let's get as many players as we can that we feel like can compete, and let's see who is the best of the best. We... It'll push TJ Finley a little bit. Um, it'll push Calzada a little bit. And let's see what happens. And if this is what happens, TJ Finley has earned the starting job. Right, right. And we, we just have to assume that this coaching staff is doing what they believe is best for this football team. They want to win football games more than anybody. There's, there's another two angles that, that I want to talk about in regards to this quarterback situation and if Finley is truly the leader and all this. We'll share that in just a moment. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help small businesses fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create the free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to help reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Look, LinkedIn they have simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And that's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Lindsey Crosby, there's another angle here that I think really says a lot about this coaching staff when we talk about this quarterback battle. With all of the news that we have heard about these wide receivers, Lindsey, mm -hmm. and I think we've heard good things about the offensive line. I don't think great, but I do good. think that it, we all said, like, if they get a little bit better, it'll do a lot for this offense, and I think that's going to happen. It will be easier to play quarterback in this offense in 2022 than it was a year ago. And I think that should give all Auburn fans a little bit of peace of mind, regardless of how you feel about all three quarterbacks. Everybody feels bigger. They feel stronger. They have another year with this playbook. They have another year with, you know, with this blocking scheme. Uh, they're next to guys they played with in the past. It feels like you, you have the recipe for improvement on the offensive line. You also have, 
ostensibly a healthy backfield with multiple different options between Dink Bigsby, Jark West Hunter, Damari Alston, Sean Jackson. And so I think part of it, that's the reason why maybe the quarterback decision doesn't matter as much in the grand scheme of things is because it's still a run first team. The goal is still to run the ball. Uh, yeah. And so getting everybody lined up and on the same page maybe matters more than who can make this throw over that guy. But yes, the offensive line feels like they are better. Uh, everything we have heard, like you said, there's been, um, it, it seems to be pretty settled, not for sure, but pretty settled left guard, right guard, the tackles. Um, look forward to seeing what they can do and to see how these quarterbacks can, when they have a little bit more time, what they can do with all of these wide receivers. Yeah, and I think the scheme will help them some, but also I just have more confidence that these wide receivers are going to be able to get open. Last year, especially down the stretch, when you were just looking at this offense and it's just like, how is Auburn going to score points? And th they didn't score a lot of points <laughs> down the stretch, sadly, but you look at all the individual pieces and it's like Demetrius Robertson, like he had a hard time generating any sort of space whatsoever. Shedrick Jackson didn't have a, a great time, you know, separating things. And, and like, I don't know how much of that was them and how much of that was the scheme really kind of being simplified down when you took your starting quarterback out due to injury. This is part of it. And that hurts TJ Finley. I said this time and time and time again last year, when he was put in after Bo Nix went down with injury, he was set up to fail. It's just, it's just going in at that point of the season. It's tough because you don't have a chemistry. You don't have a rapport with all these folks. And it was just hard. And so, down the stretch, it's like if Kobe Hudson or John Samuel Schenker weren't going to get you first downs and you didn't really have a whole lot of faith in the running game with Tank, it's just like I, I don't know how they were going to move the football. This year, though, man, like going into it, just there's seven or eight guys all of a sudden where you're like, okay, yeah, they could throw to him and I feel good about it. Here's what's really interesting to me when I'm kind of looking at the notes, uh, Harson's comments from the scrimmage. There was a great piece of, on a website, one of the websites, I think it was auburndaily.com, talking correct. about some of the uh, some of the the takeaways from Harson's comments. There's a name, like we heard a lot about, you know, some of these guys we've been hearing a lot about. Camden Brown's in there. Shedrick Jackson's in right. there. Guy that we didn't hear almost anything about and that we haven't heard a lot about in a while, Landon King. Sure. Moving from tight end to wide receiver, thought process is we're lacking in, in talent there. There needs to be somebody to step up and to kind of make some magic. And then now we have an explosion of wide receivers where you can argue we have six or seven guys up at the top who are all fighting for three starting spots. And Landon King's kind of been left out. What, what, what point do we say, okay, maybe go get back in the tight end rotation because there's not playing time at the wide receiver position? Yeah, I mean – at that time, they needed wide receiver depth, and they still may need that in the future. I feel more confident in Auburn's ability to recruit tight ends and the tight end situation moving forward um, than I do wide receivers. And also, like, you, you play three or four wide receivers in, on a lot of different plays. There's a lot of situations where, I mean, you only play two tight ends at most, and a lot of times you don't even have that many. So I, I'm okay with him doing that just because Auburn desperately, desperately needs depth in that room. Um, but after John Samuel Shanker leaves, I do think it's an interesting conversation next year for sure with what happens with that. But you look at the, the ones and twos that we've consistently seen at the wide receiver position and Landon King's not on there. I do think he will be one of the next few, the seventh or eighth option in the receiving room. And I think that's an interesting conversation because I'm going to read you off the leading seven receivers on Auburn's team last year. Okay. Kobe Hudson led with 580. Jed Jackson led with 527. Demetrius Robertson led with 489. John Samuel Shanker with 413. Not a receiver, but still for the exercise, we'll count it. Javarius Johnson, 274. Tank Bigsby, 184. Sean Shivers, 163. So I think Sean Shivers was the seventh. One, two, three, yeah, four, seven. five, six. So yeah, Shivers is the seventh one with 163 yards through the air. And just from a receiving perspective, like, what does that look like this year? I think all of those numbers go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and it may be more evened out. I don't know. We'll see. I think it's better for Auburn if it's not evened out. But that's a, that's a philosophical discussion for another day. But, yeah, you just talk about total impact. If he's the seventh guy and he's getting, let's say they all bump up 
on average 20 yards. If they all do that, that's actually a pretty big jump. But let's just say they do that. And it's like, you're talking about 180 yards over the course of the season. Like, how much of an impact is that really? And yeah, then you know, 10, 12 catches, maybe probably at worst. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one or two of those is a touchdown. And maybe that's enough to satisfy them. But yeah, it's just interesting. I would not have guessed that um, six months ago. That this yeah. is how we would be talking about Landon King. I mean, it's something where I don't think we, any of us saw the Camden Brown breakout like this. I don't know if a lot of us saw Coy Moore maybe in the top six right away. Uh, and then I don't think what we saw or we expected this big of a jump from what we've heard about Shedrick Jackson. We've heard a lot, uh, a lot of positive stuff from Harson. I mean, kind of unprompted about mm -hmm. everything from how much stronger he's gotten to how much better he is at holding on to the football to the routes that he's running. I mean, Brian Harson talks Shedrick Jackson up like he is a number one receiver, but we've heard a lot about so many guys, and it's just unfortunate timing in his part, guys breaking out. And it kind of it kind of reminds me of the defensive backs. Like we talk so much about like the top is so settled with the defensive backs that it's we're we're having all the discussions about, well, who is gonna be the sixth guy or the seventh guy? And that's kind of this wide receiver I, room is hard to feel like there's a group that top six or seven and then there's everybody else and the questions are all in that everybody else and then how's the play time going to shake out in the top six right yeah and, and who lines up where i mean it seems like Tavares dawson and javarius johnson are probably your slot guys is there a rule that you have to have apostrophe in your name to be a slot guy is that just right. how it works for Harson? right now i think so yeah okay so zebby and capers is probably third in the depth chart for that <laughs> got it cool he, he was a big slot guy his freshman year with gus no that that's funny that was good i was i didn't see where you're going with that that's Thank good you. um the other angle from a quarterback perspective is man if if you roll with tj finley and it, and you lose to penn state it's gonna be really really tough to hold on to the fan base. It'll be really tough. And that to me, Lindsay is like, he must be like, if he wins the job, he has to be so much better than the other guys. Like yeah. he has to be for him to make that decision. Um, and still we've got several weeks until, you know, th this may be determined. We don't fully know the second scrimmage is Friday. There's a chance. Maybe we know shortly after that. I don't know, but there's certainly a chance of that. Um, but man, I, it's just, if, if Finley is the starter and Auburn loses to Penn state or, you know, somehow pulls out a close one, but like the offense, like what Auburn almost did in the iron bowl where like the offense was terrible, but you still kind of squeak out a win like that type of thing. Same with LSU a few weeks after that, like that would just be, it'd be tough. It would be really tough to kind of save face through that. Yeah, I mean, last year, TJ Finley finished as, what, a 55% passer when you rounded up. Yeah. I think if, you know, like, if he's the guy, he has to be significantly better than that. Like you said, he can't, he can't be marginally better than Calzada and Ashford. He has to blow the fans out of the water because, like you said, you're working. He's underwater right now. Like, to use, you know, to use a, a, a bank banking terminology, he's underwater, and so... I mean, he's having to make up ground. He has no equity with the fan base right now. Um, it's an interesting thought process. And we'll, if he if he is the quarterback and we lose at Penn State, do you see Auburn making a change right there? How does that work? Yeah, right. And like, I mean, I mean, it helps that it's at home, but that helps you. Um, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe may, maybe they turn on him if it goes south late in the second quarter, like. Maybe it's not better if it's at home. I don't know, but it's going to be an interesting dynamic. I, I think after talking to folks that went to the scrimmage, Lindsay, I am, I feel decent about the fact that if he's the starter, I, I it, he seems like he is just taking a massive step forward. And if he's taking a step forward, great. Like yeah. we need to understand that's what we hired Brian Harson to do was to make players better. That's why we brought in uh, a wide receiver coach who, played in the NFL. That's why we went to bring in a quarterback, or sorry, an offensive coordinator. Didn't work out. We brought an offensive coordinator from the NFL. We were trying sure. to get the best possible teachers to make these guys better. I forget Second, about Austin Davis all the time. I forget that whole thing. Auburn now. coaching legend Austin Davis. 
goodness gracious. But Finley's got traits. I mean, you, you love that size. You love his cannon. It's just, can he put it all together? Can he get a little bit more touch? Didn't really turn it over a whole lot. You like that? Even when they weren't playing well, he still took care of the football. And I've got up, oh, I hear the comments coming in now. Oh, he overthrows everything. It's like, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying that he was great last year. I'm not saying that. But I do think you can look at his traits and be like, hmm, there's a chance this is can all come together. And there are people in the Locked On, Dis uh, Locked on Auburn Discord, and you can join that by clicking the, the link. It's free in the episode description down below. And there, you know, folks went back and watched the Iron Bowl last year to watch TJ Finley and the South Carolina when they're posting the, you know, what they saw from him. I'm cool with that. You can totally do that. But it's not. Like, let's just don't pretend it's the same situation here. It's 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 not. This is not. A, I mean, he, he is being able to be groomed as the starter over the course of the entire offseason. The wide receiver situation is significantly better than the situation he was placed in against South Carolina. And the offensive line situation is better. And I think the scheme situation will be better. TJ Finley's not a Mike Bobo quarterback. And I mean, maybe over the course of the season, he could become one, but like, that's just not what they were trying to do there. So I, you can do that. You can point to South Carolina. I'm getting a little passionate right now. You can point to the South Carolina game. You can point to the bowl game. You can point to the iron bowl. It's just, it's not the same situation. I mean, I don't know I, where that passion came from. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. Well, the people love to see you fired up. Uh, I am, I am here for what this coaching staff decides to do. I mean, point blank. Like, it's something where if you don't like it, if you're frustrated by it, wait till you see an actual game. You have not seen TJ Finley play quarterback in 2022. Like, full stop. You have to remember that. Yeah, TJ Finley, and you, you alluded to this earlier, TJ Finley has never played a game where he was groomed to be the starter in the offseason. It just, it just hasn't happened. Um, and some folks will say, well, yeah, because... He's never won the starting job because, you know, maybe he hasn't been good enough. And dude, maybe that's true. I don't know. Like, I'm not telling you Auburn's quarterback situation was great going into fall camp. Um, but I do think you can look at all three of them and all three of them have different traits that you like. But let's let's pump the brakes on acting like Auburn's only going to win three games next year because TJ Finley's winning the quarterback battle right now. Assuming he even is winning the quarterback battle, Lindsay. Like, let's just let's just pump the brakes for a second. Chemistry is a real thing. Like that, that's the thing that we all forget is we think you take a Calzada, you plug them in and you go. I, chemistry is real. It takes time for quarterbacks and wide receivers to learn where he likes the ball, where he throws the ball, mm -hmm. what he's going to do on a scramble. And like, it is very plausible that with more time, TJ Finley is now a lot more comfortable with these receivers where he looks significantly better. Right. Right. All right. Um, Auburn has landed a new commitment, J.C. Hart. Um, we'll talk about why we think that's such a big deal in just a moment. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to my new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs. They have a light, chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they're covered 100% in real chocolate. One of my coworkers who also got some cookie dough chunk puffs sent to him. <laughs> it was like, I wish I just had more of the, the, the cookie dough chunk that's in there. And we're all like, bro, that's just cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all it would be. But yeah, be sure to check it out. Built.com. Use promo code LOCKEDON15. Different promo code this time. LOCKEDON15. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-1-5. You get 15% off your order. That is LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Lindsey Crosby, the Auburn Tigers added J.C. Hart, the three-star corner from... Low Chapoka. I've said it several times. If he played at a bigger high school with more coverage, he would be seen as a four-star corner. I'm very confident in that. He has all the traits that a four-star corner has. And then some. His length is fantastic. He's very physical. He's good in space. He can play off ball or on the line of scrimmage. There's a ton of things to like. So Auburn now has seven members of this 2023 class. And... 247 Sports has Auburn ranked as the 64th class. 
which is 13th in the SEC per their rankings. Rivals has them as the 56th class, which is 12th in the SEC. And on three has Auburn as the 39th class, which is also 12th in the SEC. But man, I think this is a guy that his path to playing time is probably the slowest of the seven guys committed right now in the 2023 class. But the upside of J.C. Hart, man, it is incredibly. I mean, his upside is NFL corner, which (laughs) I love. Very exciting. You are a big defensive back guy. When you tell me that you're excited about this guy, then I am going to listen. Um, 6'2", 175. He fits the model of what the NFL is looking for in those bigger, longer corners, better able to stick uh, as far as, you know, man defense, things like that. So... I like the idea of saying, hey, Zach Etheridge, take this guy that people have lower expectations on because he's a three-star, warranted or not, um, work your magic, and we'll just write off the first year, and then we'll see what he does in year two. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying he doesn't; he's not good enough to play in year one. I'm saying that he's not going to be expected to contribute right away because we are so I, I don't, deep. I don't think he's good enough to play yeah. year one. Okay, I, I mean, well, there you go. This is part of I mean, yeah. It, it's hard to play corner as a true freshman. It's nothing against him. It's just the situation, yeah. especially being an outside corner like he is. I mean, that is, you are you are by yourself on the field. It is down to your technique and your skill. Uh, but I trust Zach Etheridge to give him uh, the education he needs. I like the fact that physically he is what you need as far as height and size. Right. Uh, you have time to get him into an uh, a SEC weight room and SEC strength and conditioning program. We've seen the leaps that Auburn's. Mm -hmm. Uh, players especially the offensive line have taken the last full year having had that program in the offseason so i like excited to see what he does and it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up at you know something like a 6'2 195 or 6'2 200 by the time he leaves to go to to the nfl hopefully yeah Uh, yeah he's been clocked as a 4 3 40 so i mean he's got elite speed as well i mean there's just there's a lot a lot to love shouldn't be a three-star jc hart um yeah and there, I mean, there's a chance that he plays up to a four star. Can you do that at Ochapoca? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about recruiting metrics and all that for that for me to really be super. Um, Especially super as an outside off. corner, it's. I feel like it's really hard as an outside corner to play up higher like that when you're playing a lower level of competition like Ochapoca would. Yeah, yeah, they want to see you go up against other highly ranked receivers, and he's just not going to be able to do that. Which is another reason why I think his path to playing time is a little bit delayed from from the other guys in this class, but. He makes this Auburn class better, and he provides stuff for the future. And I think you don't have to worry as much about him coming here and not playing much for two seasons and worry about him hitting the portal because he grew up an Auburn guy. Like, he loves Auburn. Auburn was his best, the, the, you know, the biggest school to offer him. Um, so, like, I'm sure there's extra loyalty there as well. So, I mean, it, it's weird that you talk about, like, you got to recruit guys once they're there. Um, but... <laughs> I, I, I'm not worried about him entering the portal either. So, a lot to like. A lot to like about J.C. Hart. So, congrats to, to him for uh, for getting that offer and committing to the Tigers, and congrats to this coaching staff for landing what I think is another, another really solid commit, which continues the trend of a ton. A ton of quality. The quantity, though, it's still not quite where you want it to be. Yeah, and... There's a great breakdown of every player that's that's been signed so far at auburndaily.com. Yeah. That's where I went to go make sure I was up to date on everybody before we recorded this pod. So auburndaily.com has the breakdown of all the players. Uh, and like you said, good quality. There's just not enough guys to bring them up higher in the rankings in the 50s or 60s. Unless yeah. you're on three. Shout out on three for the number 39 ranking. Appreciate Let's go. That. Let's, Let's go on go. three. Um, Lindsay, how can people find you, read you, hear you, all that stuff? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. My show, Locked in MLB Prospects, is available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. You can find the writing at auburndaily.com and the merch, aushirts.com. That is Lindsey Crosby. You can find my written work at auburndaily.com as well. And if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you're listening on audio and you haven't left a review on iTunes, that would mean a ton as well. Tomorrow, we celebrate Charlie Tuesday. You don't want to miss that. Till then, this has been Locked on Auburn.